This is part two of my story, and it um, begins when we moved to Brighton in 1965, and I bought my father's store. I was married. I had two children, Suzanne and Mark. My wife was very involved in spite of the children, and two more children later. She was very involved with the town, and uh, me, of course, in the pharmacy, kept one busy. In July the 13th, Friday, 1973, uh, just in the early evening, late afternoon, a tornado hit Brighton, and it touched down um, all about uh, number 100 Main Street, in around there, and uh, it uh, sort of swept through the downtown and for a couple of blocks south of Brighton, and... Uh, down as far as maybe King Edward Park. I I got on my bike and uh, biked all over town and took uh, this whole series of uh, pictures, uh, which I still have in my album. I mounted them and put a sign in the window, uh, one dollar each, place your order in the pharmacy, all proceeds, to go to the Brighton Tornado Fund. During my decades in uh, Brighton, there are, of course, many, many changes. Some good, some bad. Like the loss of the trees was bad. Dimensions of Brighton on the north, the uh, west, and the east end, they're the same dimensions as they were back in the 30s. As far as the south is concerned, it's uh, kind of expanded. But the population has changed from around 1575 to whatever it is now. Uh, the school has gone. It did. The high school did hit 1,500 people several years ago. Uh, it has dropped back considerably now. Most, most of the properties, it seems, were... Uh, once you got off the main street, seemed to be double lots, open fields for uh, where we could play baseball down at Whitten's Field, low spots where uh, the ice would gather, where we could skate, not just at the uh, skating rink, different things like that. But now there are mostly single lots, and now they've taken that a step further for good or for bad, I, I think it's for good, where they're um, building townhouses, tearing down one or two houses, and usually they're older houses, of course, because it's on, the only practical way financially, and infilling it with um, townhouses, that type of thing. That's good. The businesses, Main Street, pretty much the same, except for new businesses there, but uh, there's rarely a uh, an empty store on Main Street. For a while there, wh where the restaurant was on the south side, uh, it is now a stationary stop, shop, but uh, very few vacant stores. So they built the uh, one just off Prince Edward Street there, the small um, mall, and that is good. Um, as far as our store is concerned, Dad wasn't too much for change. He was a contented, happy fellow. And so he was uh, 1934. In 1941, he had a fire, so he was sort of forced to make a change in the store. It was hard to uh, get supplies during the war, other things with much higher priorities. But the fire was in March, and we were back in the, the renovated store at 5 Main Street by June, I think it was, May or June. When I came to town and bought the store in October, I wasn't at all happy. Business was increasing very gradually, certainly not enough for me to hire another pharmacist, so I was going to be tied to the pharmacy most of my life. I did not want that. My wife, I don't think Lucille, would not stand for that, I am quite sure. So uh, 
four months after I bought the store, the store next door was vacant. It had been a Dominion store with a barber shop in the back of it. I had one of the local builders build two or three sets of plywood islands. They weren't expensive. It cost uh, maybe $150 total. And uh, before that, Dad had everything behind glass, which, of course, did not encourage impulse shopping. Uh, nowadays, the facts show that over 50% of sales in a pharmacy are impulse, and probably much higher in a grocery store, I don't know. The uh, wall cases had all been glass enclosed. The uh, glass showcases took them all out and uh, put in these cheap... Oh, I uh, used the next door, number one Main Street, for sanding and painting the uh, shelving, the new islands, the three new islands. And then in February, I moved them in. Business immediately increased uh, something over 20% and continued for a while after that. I still was not quite content and I remember uh, get, getting the idea, I think it was in the, in the fall, Mom and Dad had gone down to Myrtle Beach for a few weeks, and I got the bright idea of moving to the number one Main Street, which was vacant, but it would give me a, about a 40% larger front shop, keeping the dispensary and the storeroom the same, it would give me 40% more room in the front shop. So I ended up phoning Dad to see if he was interested in renting that store to me. And I remember the one promise I said, I will put in the new furnace that is needed there. And he was quite agreeable to this idea. So that was uh, two major changes in two years. A a couple of months ago, we received a pleasant surprise from our son, Mark, who has a pharmacy in Peterborough. He has four girls. We just got word that the youngest girl, Emma, has had been accepted into the uh, faculty of pharmacy in uh, Kitchener, um, at the Kitchener-Waterloo University. So that means that... Uh, in another four years when she graduates that we will have had 99 years between when my father first graduated in 1924 and then me in 1953, my son in 1985, and my granddaughter in 2023. And that is my story. Mm -hmm.